I'm here in the northern part of Chiang Mai. And what's really well known here is its hill tribes. And this mountain that we're on here is called Dang Ang Kang. So what is interesting about this point is that it was a very hot topic and they've changed and now it's a great area for farming, for agricultural, and it's one of the biggest areas where they support all the food throughout Thailand. When I design my menus, it's not only about the freshest ingredients and also about what's in season, it's also about trying to understand culture. So I've come here to Dao Angka to understand a little bit more about the hill tribe culture, because it's actually one of my favorite cuisines. And what I didn't know is that this area was really well known for growing illegal substances. But the late king has put an amazing project together and has rehabilitated the whole area for them to actually be growing tea, also farming, and other certain ingredients as well. And he's really done a great job, and that's why he's much loved in Thailand for all the efforts that he has done. So we're in Angkar Station in the King's Project, and the late king has left an amazing legacy, which is basically rehabilitating the whole hill tribe in this area. And what's interesting is that they've grown everything from plants, vegetables, to fruit, herb, and the whole thing is that they've made a sustainable living for the hill tribe people. And one of the most interesting thing is, is that all the well-known chefs throughout Thailand basically use the King's Project's ingredients, which therefore means that the people of Angkar Station are providing the best restaurants, some of the best produce. Let's take a walk and have a look over here. We're in a Loho Hill Tribe village here, and we're only about 15 kilometers from the actual King's Project. And what's really interesting is that only 15K, and you've got a completely different atmosphere. And this one is very much not a touristy area. This is where the actual Loho Hill Tribe have been settled here for quite a long time. And they moved down here from Tibet from Alexander the Great time. And what's interesting is that you can see behind me there's a whole renovation of a house. And it's a real community feel. So therefore, whenever a house needs to be renovated, the whole community comes together and basically rebuilds the house. So here be behind us is the ceremony center of the village. So they will have ceremony when they make a new house, like today. So yesterday, they already met at night. And uh, family wedding, or the newborn child, everything will be done here. So it's like their church, basically. Yeah, yeah, something like that. So everyone in the, in the, in the village gathering together and then and what's interesting is that now they've changed to Christianity and a lot of them were Buddhists beforehand but they still bring in their tribal beliefs as well. I'm so glad that I've come to the Lohu Hill Tribe. I've been looking for this for a long time. I remember when I was younger, when I first came to Asia, I was actually traveling and I was searching and I had amazing time going up into Laos, and going over into the borders and I really i have been trying to find this again and it's been very, very hard to find something that's authentic and there's a bit of authenticity to it and it hasn't been commercialized. For me eventually it's great that you know there is a commercialization because it means that they're all getting money and they're all changing their lives but what does happen with that is that it does change culture and culture moves and merges into modern society and I think this is generally what happens throughout Asia and I've seen it in Indonesia, I've seen it in Thailand, I've seen it in Laos and I've also seen it in Yongan. But that's why for me it's a real fascination to be able to try and see these people as they are. So I think, you know, for this trip for me, this is one of the highlights for coming up to Chiang Mai. And I hope that, you know, I can portray the food and what I've seen here into the restaurants as well. And that's part of what I do as a, as a street food traveller, as understanding food culture. It's very important to be able to merge both because through the food, you see the culture and all these nam pricks and all these kind of hill tribe dishes. I really want my customers in the restaurant to be able to experience this. 